about Rand. There's also a 1956 Cadillac that is there that we might try to get as well. So pretty much this one is like the top of the line uh, Cadillac you could get. We're back on the Cadillac and we're gonna try to get this thing running. We know it's been off the road for 30 years, so we wanna to try to see if it'll move under its own power and possibly go back on the road for the first time. So the first thing we're gonna do is try to figure out this key situation. The car didn't come with a key whenever we bought it, so we're gonna to have to figure out how we can get this thing turning over, uh, how we can hook up to the starter solenoid and get this motor turned over so we can see if it's getting spark. So to solve the issue with the key, we kind of rigged up a way that it will work. So somebody has already taken the um, key stuff out. They like ripped the back of the wires off. So we figured out that the um, red wire here is 12 volts to the battery. The pink is powered to the coil and then the purple wire is the starter solenoid. So we hooked up this headlight switch just because it was the only switch we had laying around. But it works to tie those two together and to not provide power all the time. So we can turn the key off um, by closing the switch and then turn the key back on. Um, so then we just have to touch the purple wire to it and then it'll turn over. So let's try it. All right, so I hooked up power and we're going to turn the switch on to the first click. And our oil pressure light and our generator light is on, so we know that it's getting power. Also, the dome light comes on, but that always comes on with the door open. Just cool that that works. So. Now we just gotta touch the purple wire to the red wire and see if it will turn over. Yep. So if you can hear that, the motor's turning over. So um, all we gotta do now is check for spark and see if we're getting spark. And if we are, then we'll throw some fuel in it. All right, so we're definitely getting spark to the plug. Um, the points are gapped. Um, we got our battery in there, so now all we need is some fuel. Um, so if you guys are doing this at home and obviously don't want to run the old gas from the tank and you just want to gravity feed it, um, the best way that I figured how to do this um, and one that probably won't cost you anything is uh, to get some, uh, get a bottle like this. Uh, usually it's for gear oil or something for a differential. Um, and I always just cut a hole in the top of it to pour some gas in there. These are really good because the caps are tapered and uh, you can put a hose on the end of them and they won't leak everywhere. I used to do water bottles and stuff, but they always leaked. Um, so these work really good. And then um, on this car, it's really easy because the fuel pump is right here, but just hook to your, uh, either your fuel filter or to your fuel pump and then just, you can pour some gas in there, let it drain down, and then you should be getting the proper fuel to the carburetors, um, and you should be able to gravity feed it. Also, if your carburetors um, have a line hooked straight to them, you can feed them directly to the carburetor. That way, if your fuel pump doesn't work, um, the fuel will just trickle down straight to the carburetor, and it should also still work. Um, in this case, uh, we're gonna want it to see if our uh, the fuel pump did work and um, if so we'll see if our uh, clear bowl here fills up with fuel. So uh, let's crank it over and see if it'll fire. Alright, ready? Yeah. Fill that glass bowl up. All right, 
We got it running for the first time. We weren't able to run it very long off of the gravity feed, um, but I ended up getting a, another tank that would be a little bit bigger so we could run it for a little bit longer and then possibly see if the thing will move in gear. Um, it was pretty cool to see the fuel pump work, which is good that that works. Um, and then you can see our glass bowl here is filled up with fuel now. Um, so that's pretty cool that that all works and uh it's getting clean fuel so once we get a little bit more fuel in it and fill the bowls up it should probably run and it seemed like it ran pretty good so uh hopefully we can get a fuel system figured out and then see if this thing will move um we did put a little bit of brake fluid in the master cylinder here um and then we pumped it and there's a little bit of pedal. So I think maybe these brakes will work if we bleed them. Um, it didn't have a cap on it. So whenever I pressure washed it, I just stuck a cap on it so the water wouldn't get in there. So hopefully um, I can bleed the brakes and the transmission fluid looks really good. And this thing should be able to move under its own power. So I don't know how long it's been since it's driven around um but this sticker says it expired in 95 and the lady said it was sitting at her house for 10 years so i don't know it's probably been a while since she's moved on her own power but uh it'll be back on the road very shortly so that'll happen probably in a few episodes from now um and you'll see that on another episode of chasing crappy cars What do you think of your new car? Pretty sick.